What's going on, everybody? My name is LB, the realist with Surrealistic Studios, Surreal News, where the realist is real. Thanks for joining me on another segment. Hit that like button, hit that uh, bell so you get notified when I do videos. Comment when I'm done. Subscribe to your boy and share this video, please, so I can get the message out. Um, Representative Bush Drive, um, Representative Bush Drive's call for White House action on eviction moratorium lapse. This is going to be from The Hill. I'm going to read this article here. As we all know, or maybe you don't, uh, the eviction moratorium nationally has expired. Locally, well, here in California, in the state of California, we have our eviction moratorium set to expire on September 30th of 2021. But the, um, the national or the general eviction moratorium has already expired. And 6 million people face eviction right now. Um, right now, the HUD HUD only has distributed about 20% of rental relief for individuals that are in danger of evictions. You know, so this is how well our government and our process works. We have the money, we have the homes, but we're not gonna give it to the people so that, that we can fix the issue. It's just not in the realm of possibilities for us. You know, the, they let the eviction moratorium run out and expire. They only started talking about it days before. Now, President Biden is saying he can't do anything about it. The courts are saying they can't do anything about it because they've done it too many times. They've, been, they've extended it too many times. Everybody is basically washing their hands of this. Congress is saying they can't do anything about it. Everybody is washing their hands of this and pointing to the next person saying, hey, take care of it. Hey, you take care of it. No, you take care of it. No, you take care of it. Meanwhile, millions of people face evictions. Now, whether, whether, you, know, whether you think that you know, a lot of these people had it coming you know, or, or a lot of these people didn't. A lot of these people are seriously hurting. A lot of these people had no choice. A lot of these people were trying to stay safe. A lot of these people are still trying to stay safe, but are in danger right now. And right now our government is failing us, which honestly, we shouldn't be surprised. <sighs> so let me go ahead and take these off folks. They were just for the uh, thumbnail there. I'm gonna read again from The Hill. Again, the title is Representative Bush Drives Call for White House Action on Eviction Moratorium Labs. And again, I just want to give thanks to Representative Cory Bush, who's been out there for a while already, sleeping, stand, like sleeping like in a chair, I guess, because they can't actually lay down on the steps of the Capitol Hill. I want to thank her. I want to thank everybody who came out in support. Of, of extending the eviction moratorium. And I know there's a lot of people that are in disagreement with Cory Bush on a lot of things, on a lot of issues. But I think that we should still give her credit where credit is due. You know, whether you think this is grandstanding or it's too little too late. Excuse me. The fact is, she's still doing it. She's still doing it. And this is something that actually hits her close to home because she was homeless previously uh, before she entered Congress. So I'm going to read the article here and... Again, I'll leave it down below so you guys can check it out for yourselves. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. You know, just be honest, be fair, be nice. All right. Representative Cory Bush, a uh, Democrat of Missouri on Tuesday, called on both the White House and Congress to step up and reinstate the federal eviction moratorium. We're asking the White House to make it very, uh, very clear, you know, we can get this thing done. Representative Cory Bush, Democrat of Missouri, said from outside the U.S. Capitol building. Bush has been at the building since Friday since Friday night to draw attention to the federal government's inaction on the issue. So she's been there since Friday night. It is now Tuesday. Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You know, I mean, that deserves a little bit of praise, I think, you know. Um, my focus right here, right now, today, is that urgent crisis of hundreds of thousands of people have already started to hit the streets, right? And we did not have this thing uh, fixed before now. The moratorium, which has kept people across the country from being evicted for most of the pandemic, expired uh, midnight on Saturday, leaving millions vulnerable to being displaced from their homes. Many view the eviction moratorium as a crucial public health policy, and its expiration has, been, has sent liberal lawmaker, uh, liberal lawmakers scrambling. On uh, Thursday, President Biden made an 11th hour plea to Congress to pass legislation to extend the moratorium, but House Democrats were unable to come to a consensus on Friday before the lower chamber's uh, scheduled summer recess. So the president punted to Congress. <laughs> the, 
but Congress failed to act before they went on recess. So before they get out to go 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 out and play, and a lot of people say, well, when they're not when they're on recess, they're actually still working. I don't want to hear none of that, none of that crap. They need to be working right now. They know exactly what they need to be doing. So the president punted to Congress. Congress punts back to 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 the president. And, and the president is like, whoa, but the courts. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So the Biden administration is maintaining that it no longer has the authority to extend the moratorium further due to a June support, uh, Supreme Court decision. However, progressives have needled the White House for, a, for the last minute punt. So much of the responsibility right now really falls on the White House to rise to the occasion and to use the ability it has to extend the eviction moratorium. Representative Mondaire Jones, a Democrat of New York, also present on the Capitol steps, said Tuesday. Progressives aren't alone in their criticism of the White House. Top House Democrats, along with the Congressional Black Caucus, have released multiple statements urging the Biden administration to act. Bush said that she spoke with Speaker Nancy Pelosi, a Democrat in California, earlier in the, early in the day, and that the top House Democrat is supportive of the cause. Supportive, with quotations. The extension of the moratorium has become an issue that both progressives and moderate Democrats agree on even as they butt heads on in burgeoning midterm battles. Bush on Tuesday said that this issue is personal for her. Prior to the time in Congress, prior to her time in Congress, the Missouri Congresswoman experienced homelessness and eviction. I do understand it. I do know what it's like, Bush told reporters. I do know what it's like to have babies sleeping in a car. Everything I own in trash bags. There's no way that I can sit back and be quiet. Joining Bush and Jones outside of the Capitol Tuesday afternoon, were representatives John Sarbanes, a Democrat in Maryland, Sheila Jackson Lee, a Democrat in Texas, and Al Green, Democrat in Texas. Prominent civil rights leader, uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson was also present. Bush noted that a steady stream of House members have returned to Washington, D.C. since the weekend, but it's unclear if and when Pelosi will move to have the House vote on extending the moratorium. And again, that's gonna be from the Hill and I'll leave it down below if you guys wanna read it for yourselves and, and, and go through it. So. Again, everybody's punting off to each other. Nobody wants to actually do what's necessary. You know, Congress, one person in Congress can't do it. Cori Bush can't just do it unilaterally. She needs the rest of Congress to get behind her. And, and unfortunately, that means they have to go through Nancy Pelosi. You know what I'm saying? And why Joe Biden isn't rallying to, to, to fix this issue that was so easily, so easily fixable is beyond me. And part of me wants to say, you know, forgive me, but I, I, part of me wants to say, hey, Trump would have did it. <laughs> All I can say is, thank goodness that I was able to get rental relief because I had lost my job twice. But and I was on unemployment, got kicked off of unemployment. Never ending, you know, pending indefinitely unemployment so thank goodness i was able to get rental assistance i was able to find a job that i'm comfortable semi-comfortable at <laughs> it's, it's a could be a little dangerous but that it goes with the territory when you're a security officer um yes i said officer top flight no i'm not top flight but um thank goodness i was able to get that rental relief and i had signed up months and months ago and all of a sudden i got text messages and, and they started to get the ball rolling i had somebody actually call me and, and send me uh, emails and they were very persistent. They were very nice to me. They were very on the ball and they, they, they made it clear that they really wanted to help me and my family get rental assistance as quickly as possible. And the guy that spoke to me made it happen in like a week. They were able to send the payments out directly to our landlord. And so the landlord has their payments and we're taken care of. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that and the, mechanism, the mechanisms and the people that made that happen, I'm grateful for because there's so many people that still have yet to receive their assistance. So many people have yet, I said 20% of people have received assistance. Only 20% of the funds allocated for this have been allocated through HUD, through the HUD. 20%. What are they doing with the money? Where's all the money? That's what I want to know. Where's the money at? People are suffering right now in the streets, facing evictions. The landlords can't wait to evict some people. And they, they even have the opportunity that like they have the choice of whether or not they want to accept the government relief funds or not. They can say, no, we don't accept that. And then just kick you out. 
And I was sitting here discussing that with my wife, like, wouldn't what, th that doesn't make any sense? If all they care about is receiving the money for rent, why would they reject the funds because they're coming from a third party? That doesn't make any sense in the world. Like in that case, wouldn't the government just give us the money directly and then we can pay our own rent? Since they, since the landlord don't doesn't want to take it, or since some of them don't want to take it, you know. So it's just a very complicated, and irritating, and disgusting situation that's happening that's unfolding right now. I. I'm 32 years old, folks. I just got political um, in 2015, 2016, four or five years in the making here. And my heart hurts. My brain hurts. Like, it's just incredible. That's why we have to find time to really be happy, find our peace. You know, I'm, I'm helping to take care of a baby. You know, my son, um, which is my stepson, for those of you that don't know, uh, he had a, he had a baby. And I've been helping to raise her, you know, and she takes a lot of time. You know, she does take a lot of time. She requires a lot of attention. She's at that age now where she's getting around very well. <laughs> so, you know, if my videos suffer for that, I apologize. But, you know, it's also a great thing. You know, it, it's, it's great that I'm able to contribute to, you know, the education and, and to the well-being of, of a new person that's coming up in this world you know it's also scary because it's a new person coming up in this world a world where we literally let the time run out and let millions of people face evictions in a time where we're destroying the the planet it makes me very weary and very cautious about bringing any new lives into this world but for the ones that we have here we have to continue to fight we have to continue to make it known that we won't stop you know I think that people need to really hit the streets, especially in situations like this where we won't have, an, we won't have the, the choice. Millions of people won't have the choice but to already be in the streets. And I will absolutely stand with them. So with all that being said, folks, love, peace, and light. Remember, do something kind for somebody else in the world. And, and in turn, the universe will reward you. Um, find all of my information down below. Uh, and let's stay on top of this issue. Let's, let's, let's really be there for our neighbors. Let's really be there for each other. And if you know somebody who's facing eviction, send them, you know, send them a, a basket or something. You know, go, go visit them. See how they're doing. See how they're coping. See if there's anything that can be done through the churches. See if there's anything that can be done for them to apply for rental assistance. You know, see if they, they can call the people to see if they can expedite the process. I'm just asking that we do something to help. That's it. All right. Um, until next time, folks, I'm out.